The steam engine, for its type, is one of the most versatile things on land. And the diesel engines are the power behind the mixed traffic goods and specials that go all around the island of Sodor. This is NWR Stories. Foreign Territory Henry is one of the heavy goods engines on the island of Sodor and he has worked on the railway since its beginning during the 1910s. When he first arrived on the railway, he was not a very successful steam engine due to the fact that he had a smaller firebox and couldn't run on the coal that the other engines ran on. But after some Welsh coal and an unfortunate accident with the Flying Kipper, he was rebuilt and really reliable to the Northwestern Railway. And he was often a familiar sight. Even though Henry is up there in age, he still has not lost his charm and his big heart. And that is why, to the Northwestern Railway and its engines, as well as its residents, he will always be their number three green engine. One day, Henry, Ted, and Bear were all sitting in the shed having a conversation. Oh, do you feel that, gentlemen? The weather is getting warmer. And soon, it will be springtime. So now it won't be so cold in the morning. You know us diesels do not like being cold, said Ted. Yes, and not to mention, I won't be hearing those blasted jokes about me being a bear and the children asking me do I hibernate for the winter. Ugh, I really get tired of those, said Bear. Yes, but that means also there are more jobs to do with the summer season coming up right behind the spring season. Ugh, I can already feel my wheels aching already. But as long as the customers and the passengers and all of our jobs are satisfied, that's all that matters. And that is why you are one of our most hard-working engines on the island, said Richard Hatt walking up to Henry. Oh, sir, I did not know that you were coming here today. What brings you here? I'm actually here to see you, Henry. I have a job for you. And I fear this is one that you actually might like. <laughs> oh, come on, you know I don't complain when it comes to jobs. What is it? Well... We're getting a new engine on the island. He is one that has also been here before, but um, if I recall correctly from my grandfather's stories, him, Duck, and Gordon were not having a favorable conversation. Ah, I think I heard about that one. It was when they were arguing about which station was which on the mainland. But little did they know, they were all right said Bear. And, not to mention, he has also have not worked on a busy railway in a while. He mainly sits in a shed on a heritage railway. And I brought him here because he probably just needs to be, you know, around engines, working engines. Because I feel, from what I've heard, he hasn't really moved much since his rescue from scrap during the 1970s. 
Can I trust you to help him out? Certainly, sir. You know I definitely cannot say no to a job given to me by... Well, I can't call you the Fat Controller because... Well, you're pretty fit for your title, of course. Thank you. And I knew I came to the right engine. He should be waiting in the station. Right, sir. I'll make my way there soon. Shortly after the conversation between Richard Hatt and Henry, the visitor arrived into the station and stopped in platform two. This engine had dark green paint with red stripes and had smoke deflectors too. He was very similar in, to Henry in design, but he was a lot smaller than Henry. Well, a lot will be saying too much now. During that same time, a certain Metropolitan Vickers diesel had stopped in the platform right next to him. Ah, Henry, you look different. You had dark green paint and they gave you smoke deflectors. Hmm, I'm liking the new look. Excuse me, um, you might have a misunderstanding. Oh, I mistook you for a friend of mine. He has light green paint, the number three on his tender, and has red stripes too. He also might be a little bit bigger than you. I'm not too sure. Well, I'm Boko. What's your name? Um, well, I was never actually given a name through my years of service. They mostly just called me Big City Engine, or the Foreign Engine, or just lots and lots of other names. I guess I'm just a no-name ninja. Well, there has to be a name that stands out there for you. Do you have any ideas? Not really, but there was the name of the man that bought me, and I often thought about taking his name to honor him, now that he's deceased, of course. I think I might like the name Grant. Yes, that is a good name. Yes, my name is Grant. See, there you go. Now you have a name, so now you're not a no-name ninja. So, have you been here before? Said Boko. Yes, yes, many years ago, in fact. I was here in a shed, because I just brought a train here from London. And I was here with two engines. I think one was an LNER Grizzly A1, and one was a GWR 5700 class. Hmm, sounds like Duck and Gordon. Ah, oh, wait, you're that engine they were arguing about the station thing with, weren't you? Yes, and... Thinking back on it now, it was a pretty stupid argument, because, in a way, we were all right. Indeed we were, said a certain pannier tank, rolling aside Boko. Looking back on it now, it was a very stupid argument, but hey, we live and learn. We're much older than we were now. Yes, we are. This railway has changed. But, oh, I am supposed to be reuniting with, uh, well, not reuniting, but I was supposed to be waiting for an engine named Henry. He should be here by now, right? Well, I did just travel past the shed. He was just leaving it, so that means he should be here right about... Suddenly, a whistle was heard. Yep, there he is, said Boko. Right as Boko said that... Henry the Green Engine arrived into the station. Sorry I'm late all, had to pick up coal and water, but I'm here. Oh, and you must be the new engine that the Fat Controller was talking about. What's your name? Well, thanks to your diesel friend over here, my name is now Grant. It's nice to meet you, Henry. It is nice to meet you as well. And oh boy, he was right. We do look somewhat similar. Indeed we do. I say, you are an Ellen 
You are an LMS Black 5. Yes, I am. This is what I was rebuilt into, but I always, I never, I always wasn't this type of engine. Really? What were you before? A mix-up of some designs made by Gresley. A failed a prototype. But I was rebuilt and, well, I'm an LMS engine now. Why? Fascinating. Well, I heard I'm supposed to be showing you around the island today, so let's get this started. And with the toot of his whistle, Henry jumped out of the station. And soon, Grant followed as well. Throughout the day, Henry was showing Grant how to run things on the island of Soto. He made sure to show him everything he needed to know and also showed him the rights and wrongs of the island. A shock to Henry revealed that Grant did not mind also handling mixed traffic work. He overall proved that he was indeed a very useful engine. That night at the sheds, all the engines were talking about their day. So, Grant, how was your day? I heard you and Henry got a lot of things done, said Bear. The day wasn't so bad. It was actually very informative. Henry showed me the rules and regulations of the island and showed me how to do jobs in a timely and efficient manner. I am overall very, very, very excited to be here now. He's also a very fast learner. Extremely fast. I barely had to show him anything, and he adjusted really, really great. Um, Henry, aren't you supposed to be taking the kipper now? Said Boko. Oh, that is right. Ah, wow, the Richard Hat is not going to be happy about me being late. Ugh. It's okay, Henry. After all the work you've done to train me today, I can take the kipper for you if you don't mind. Grant, I couldn't ask you to do that. No. It's fine. I'll gladly do it. Okay, just be careful. You know it's dark out, so you need to make sure you are very aware of your surroundings. I will. Thank you for the helpful hint, my friend. Not long after he left the shed, he arrived at the docks to collect the kipper. Arthur had already arranged the train for him. So it was in a matter of time before he was ready to go. When he buffered up to the train, he really he looked at another engine which seemed familiar familiar to him. Clarence, you're here. This is what happened to you. Wait a minute. I know that voice. Grant. Oh my stars! It has been. Years since I've seen you. I haven't seen you since you were withdrawn from service during the 60s. The same can be said of you, old friend. I heard you went to Barry's scrapyard. What happened to you? Well, I went to this heritage railway on the mainland. They took care of me until I was brought here during the 1970s. And I run the fishing trains from here to the branch lines. Oh, can I say, it's good to see a lot of us LMS engines here. British Railway weren't too kind to none of us. Which makes me realize that that whole Big Four argument thing we had back in the day was very pointless. I may have not been built during the Big Four times, but I understand. We live and we learn. But I have to give you some warnings, though. So, upper on the upper part of the line by the viaduct, they are doing some renovations on it, so... I suggest you be careful and make sure you are not uh, speeding. 
but they do have warning signs. Thank you. I will be sure to be careful. Thank you for warning. And with the toot of his whistle, Grant left the docks with his train. Grant was moving down the line, trying to keep up with the timetable for the night. I have to make sure that I'm not messing with Henry's deliveries. I must make sure I'm doing it right, said Grant to himself. He rushed through under the bridge and straight into the tunnel. But little did he know, disaster laid ahead. He raced up the bridge, not knowing that the tracks were not in place all the way. But before he realized, it was too late. His wheel slipped off the rails and crashed onto the rails. The thing that stayed on the rails was the breaker. Grant lay dazed and surprised on his side, and he slowly drifted out of consciousness after the accident. Soon the mess was getting cleaned up and the repair clues had came very early in the morning. Grant was not hurt. He was still a bit dazed, but he was all right. Soon, Henry buffered up to him and took him, it was getting ready to take him back to the yard. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have been more careful. I was just trying to make sure not to mess up your Flying Kipper deliveries. Hey, hey, don't beat yourself up, okay? It could have happened to any engine. But we live and we learn. But all of my life I've been told that I should be a stand-up engine and never make any mistakes. But I guess I failed. Well... I don't know how it was on your original railway before you were before you were scrapped before you were sent to the scrapyard, but um, you must realize that on Sodor, mistakes is what's part of life. Mistakes build character, and you must learn to deal with them, or you'll never learn. Besides, I've made so many mistakes working on this railway, I cannot even name them all. There was the incident with the flying kipper. There was the time I got <laughs> I derailed into the water and there was another time where ooh, I remember this one time I was taking a train up Gordon's Hill and I burst my safety valve just because I didn't listen but again we live and we learn my friend and with a toot of his whistle Henry took Grant back to the yards after Grant was repaired he finally learned what it meant to be a Sodor engine. He realized that it was okay to make mistakes as long as he learned from them and did better. And that is why now he really is a really useful engine on the Sodor Railway. He would have some other adventures too, but that's a story for another day.